Hi folks, we are up to precept number nine. We're heading into the home stretch. And as I look back on the videos I've done and see like the view counts for each one, I can see that certain precepts are more popular than others. That's kind of interesting. What people want to click on, I, I don't know. But uh, so we'll see how this one goes because this precept is don't be angry. And it is one of, t to me, one of the most difficult and interesting of all the precepts. First off, Nishijima Roshi's version of the precept is don't become angry. That's a tall order right there. And his commentary on it goes, many of us are prone to become angry. It seems a natural outcome of our personality. But in fact, anger is not our natural state. It is not our natural condition. In Buddhism, we seek to maintain our composure. To be composed is our natural condition. To be natural is the teaching of Gautama Buddha. The Brahmajala Sutra, that 5th century Chinese document that seeks to explain all of the precepts, has ninth major precept on anger and resentment, is how they put it. A disciple of the Buddha shall not harbor anger or encourage others to be angry. He should not create the causes, conditions, methods, or karma of anger. As a disciple of the Buddha, he ought to be compassionate and philale, helping all sentient beings develop the good roots of non-contention. If instead he insults and abuses sentient beings or even transformation beings, such as deities and spirits, with harsh words, hitting them with his fists or feet, or attacking them with a knife or club, whoa, or harbors grudges, even when the victim confesses his mistakes and humbly seeks forgiveness in a soft conciliatory voice, the disciple commits a major offense. That's, that's an interesting way to put it, because it, it, it adds a lot of equivocation, a kind of, a, a lot of sort of excuses for being angry, kind of. I'm not sure I, I go for that one, but we'll talk about that later. And Dogen's commentary in Kyoju Kaimon, which may be Dogen or may not be Dogen, as we talked about earlier, he says, It is not regress, it is not advance, it is not real, it is not unreal. There is illuminated cloud ocean. I think it should be there is an illuminated cloud ocean. There is an ornamented cloud ocean. I, I don't get it. I'm sorry. If you want me to explain that one, I can't, because I don't really get what he's trying to go for there. But let's look at some of the American and European Zen centers who have versions of this precept in their lineage, and uh, see what they say. Ninth precept on being angry is the Shasta Abbey, uh, Griffith Folk. Ninth precept, not giving rise to anger. That's a uh, a version I've heard before, not giving way to anger, not giving rise to anger. Uh, actualize harmony, do not be angry, says John Dido Lori. I cultivate inner peace, I do not harbor ill will, says Nonim. Great vows and monastery, says I vow not to unleash anger, but to seek its source, like unleash the fury, like Ingve Malmsteen. If anybody gets that reference, you can leave a comment below. Uh, this one I like a lot. No indulgence in anger. That's by Robert Aitken. Indulgence in anger, and I, I'll try to circle back around to that because I think anger is almost always a kind of indulgence. Abstinence from harboring ill will, says Akiyama Roshi. Uh, Less K says dwelling in equanimity. Uh, Mel Weitzman says I resolve not to harbor ill will but to dwell in equanimity. That's kind of similar. Appleton Zen Center, who always have a longer version, says, Embody compassion. I recognize and enlighten my greed, anger, and ignorance. I transform my negative emotions and act with equanimity, sympathetic joy, compassion, and loving kindness. And Diane Eshin Rosetto, for once, has a very short version, but I like this one. I take up the way of letting go of anger. Letting go of anger is, is to me, what is really, really important. Let's see what Kobenchino Otogawa Roshi has to say about it in Embracing Mind. He first gives the Bodhidharma One Mind Precept version of the precept. Self-nature is mysteriously profound. In the midst of selfless truth, truth of selflessness, no measuring of oneself is called the precept of not being angry. And his commentary goes, Usually this precept is kindly explained. Disciple of the Buddha abstains from harboring hatred, malice, or ill will. 
This realm is very big, from gentle anger to very developed rage, to the joy of hurting people. Anger changes from protective to attacking, from negative to very positive. If there is just one person in the world, he will always be neutral. If someone is very angry but is the only person in the world, he is a little crazy. When you get mad at yourself, that means you're mad at another self. Maybe you turn your face and see yourself, or you see yourself as other. This is very hard. Even if you are alone, this precept applies, in the sense of self-hatred, self-deceiving, self-clinging. If you become angry, you don't stop being Buddha. Anger appears, that's all. At that time, you don't say to yourself that you shouldn't be getting angry. When you get close to a fire, you don't say it should be cold. Self-pride is another side of this phenomenon. Illusion causes a sensation, so it seems real. If you become wealthy and then look at the poor and feel pride, it is, at best, an unnecessary thing to experience. But we sometimes experience it that way. If you fail an examination, you feel depressed, which is natural. But it is not necessary to stick on it for a long time. Making a judgment about yourself can be dangerous because you cover up reality. But putting up an idea that you should not be angry, you are covering up reality. To turn the contents of anger into wisdom, you live it and learn something from it. I think that's a good point. Anger is suffering, as you know. When someone gets very angry with you, his suffering is deeply concerned with you. He is letting you know how he exists. When he sees that you understand him, this anger disappears. When you see someone who is quite angry, when you really listen to him and completely understand his position, you yourself become angry. But fortunately, anger doesn't stay. If you enjoy keeping it always, it will continue. But otherwise, it is always slipping off of you. Anger causes life to shorten, which is the very opposite of self-nature, our eternal being, which has been the same up to now, from its very origin, a pretty long time. To be here as a human being is a natural arrangement, but how rare it is. It is a miraculously rare thing. So, we have utmost respect and care for our own life, for we are radiant life. I really like his commentary there, and I, I think it says a lot. Uh, I wrote an article called Kill Your Anger, which I believe is still on the internet, and if I can find it, I'll leave a link below, and if you don't see a link below, that means I couldn't find it. But it was for a Tricycle Magazine, or maybe uh, one of the other Buddhist magazines, and it also appears as a chapter of my book, Sit Down and Shut Up. And anger has always been a problem for me. And one of the things I said about that, one of the metaphors I used, which was the thing that occurred to me at the time, I was living in Japan. And in Japan, you have these very, very deep bathtubs. And people uh, wash off before they get in the bathtub. And the bathtub is a place where you put very hot water and soak for a little while to kind of relax. So maybe this is where that metaphor came from. Because I said that I believed in the past that anger was all was something that welled up in me and couldn't be stopped you know I, I'd feel like out of control uh, the anger would would come up and I would feel like I cannot stop all of this anger and what I realized after a while was that I was it was like I was sitting in the bathtub tossing water up over my head and all the water is coming down on me and I'm going why is this water always coming down on me why is there so much water coming down on me ah. uh, in short I was indulging in anger and indulging in anger is something we do because a lot of times people talk about strengthening the ego through positive sort of things like I'm so great I'm so wonderful I'm you know I'm the best but I find that for some people, and I think I'm one of those people, the best way to strengthen the ego is in negative terms. Like, I'm angry about this, or I'm sad about this, or I'm depressed about this, or I'm worthless, or I'm nothing. That is a great, great way to build up your sense of individuality as a separate personal self who endure, you know, endures forevermore or something like that, or endures until he dies or whatever you want to think of it. And, and anger is a great way to do this too. So the initial sort of flash of anger is something I don't know if there's anything you can do about that. Anger just sort of comes up, and I think it's a sort of energy of habit. But what what I would do, what I think a lot of us do, is indulge in it. You know, you kind of, you know, enjoy the glorious stink, you know, of, of, of spreading all this awful stink all over yourself and going, mm, that smells so bad, you know, and you're just like, ugh, bathing in your own, you know, puke or something is, is kind of the image I think of. The, the other thing about anger that 
doesn't get mentioned by any of these uh, commentaries that I've seen, but I think it's very important, is that letting go of anger is, is the most important thing. And letting go of anger is something you do even when you are right. A lot of people will excuse anger because I'm right, I'm correct, that guy did something bad, or those people are awful, or you know, whatever it is. And then, and then you can just justify your anger. The thing is, everybody justifies their anger. Even the worst people in the world justify their anger. And justifying these negative emotions, anger, hatred, uh, greed, any of these other things that you can justify, is always the same action, no matter whether you're right or whether you're wrong. So giving up anger is what's important. And sometimes we feel like, oh, well, if I gave up my anger, then all these terrible problems in the world would never uh, get fixed because I wouldn't be angry about them. The thing about trying to fix terrible problems in the world through anger is it doesn't work. Uh, once you're emotionally set, you know, your, your anger is welling up and making all the things fizzy in your brain, you're not going to be able to speak clearly and you're not going to be able to think clearly to do something about the problem that you are so angry about. That's the difficulty there and that's why you don't indulge in anger even when you are right. Uh, how to get over anger is is something I've had to kind of work on a lot and zazen practice has helped because various emotions come up during zazen practice and you just learn to set them aside and different thoughts come up and you set them aside and you just keep doing that and there rarely comes a time when it's just all clear sailing and everything is smooth and wonderful there's Ziggy getting angry at the who knows what somebody parking their car up on the street in zazen you keep putting each thing aside every time something comes up in your mind you put it aside whether it's a good thing whether it's a bad thing whether it's a feeling that makes you feel great whether it's a feeling that makes you feel terrible you just put each one aside a lot of people make the mistake in zazen of putting aside the feelings then and thoughts that make them feel bad and embracing the ones that make them feel good but that just leads to more of the same thing that in my case made it impossible for me to stop anger once it welled up or it seemed impossible I was a very angry dude for a lot of my uh, youth and what I had to show for it was often broken doors you know I would slam doors until they broke I remember the dashboard of one of the cars I owned when I was in my 20s had this big not not quite a hole in it but this big crack because I pounded on it you know for some reason uh, that was all a waste of energy uh, that I no longer indulge in and I feel so much better for not indulging in it so if you want to help me not indulge in anger by being so angry that nobody donated to me, you can donate uh, to me via the links below. They're on pay and there's a Patreon and PayPal link if you're watching on YouTube. There are direct links in the description of the video. I want to thank you all for continuing to donate to this uh, project that I'm doing and I really appreciate it. If you are having financial difficulties, please do not donate. I don't want donations from people who are having trouble or struggling, but those of you who are not struggling and continuing to donate are the ones who are making it possible for me to go to the grocery store later on today, and that is real. That is actually how I make most of my living. So I thank you very much for your support. See you later. Have a good time all the time. Bye.